Apollo 8 was the first crewed spacecraft to leave low Earth orbit and the first human spaceflight to reach the Moon. The crew orbited the Moon ten times without landing, and then departed safely back to Earth. These three astronauts Frank Borman, James Lovell, and William Anders were the first humans to personally witness and photograph the far side of the Moon in an Earthrise. Apollo 8 launched on December 21, 1968, and was the second crewed spaceflight mission flown in the United States Apollo space program after Apollo 7, which stayed in Earth orbit. Apollo 8 was the third flight in the first crewed launch of the Saturn V rocket, and was the first human spaceflight from the Kennedy Space Center, located adjacent to Cape Kennedy Air Force Station in Florida. Originally planned as the second crewed Apollo Lunar Module and Command Module test, to be flown in an elliptical medium Earth orbit in early 1969, the mission profile was changed in August 1968 to a more ambitious command module only lunar orbital flight to be flown in December, as the lunar module was not yet ready to make its first flight. Astronaut Jim McDivitt's crew, who were training to fly the first lunar module flight in low Earth orbit, became the crew for the Apollo 9 mission, and Borman's crew were moved to the Apollo 8 mission. This left Borman's crew with two to three months less training and preparation time than originally planned, and replaced the planned lunar module training with translunar navigation training. Apollo 8 took 68 hours to travel the distance to the Moon. The crew orbited the Moon 10 times over the course of 20 hours, during which they made a Christmas Eve television broadcast in which they read the first 10 verses from the Book of Genesis. At the time, the broadcast was the most watched TV program ever. Apollo 8's a successful mission paved the way for Apollo 10 in, with Apollo 11 in July 1969, the fulfillment of U.S. President John F. Kennedy's goal of landing a man on the moon before the end of the decade. The Apollo 8 astronauts returned to Earth on December 27, 1968, when their spacecraft splashed down in the northern Pacific Ocean. The crew members were named Time Magazine's Men of the Year for 1968 upon their return. In the late 1950s and early 1960s, the United States was engaged in the Cold War, a geopolitical rivalry with the Soviet Union. On October 4, 1957, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite. This unexpected success stoked fears and imaginations around the world. It not only demonstrated that the Soviet Union had the capability to deliver nuclear weapons over intercontinental distances, it challenged American claims of military, economic, and technological superiority. The launch precipitated the Sputnik crisis and triggered the space race. President John F. Kennedy believed that not only was it in the national interest of the United States to be superior to other nations, but that the perception of American power was at least as important as the actuality. It was therefore intolerable to him for the Soviet Union to be more advanced in the field of space exploration. He was determined that the United States should compete, and sought a challenge that maximized its chances of winning. The Soviet Union had heavier lifting carrier rockets, which meant Kennedy needed to choose a goal that was beyond the capacity of the existing generation of rocketry, one where the US and Soviet Union would be starting from a position of equality something spectacular. Even if it could not be justified on military, economic, or scientific grounds. After consulting with his experts and advisors, he chose such a project, to land a man on the moon and return him to the Earth. An early and crucial decision was the adoption of lunar orbit rendezvous, under which a specialized spacecraft would land on the lunar surface. The Apollo spacecraft therefore had three primary components, a command module with a cabin for the three astronauts, and the only part that would return to Earth, a service module to provide the command module with propulsion, electrical power, oxygen, and water, and a two-stage lunar module, which comprised a descent stage for landing on the Moon and an ascent stage to return the astronauts to lunar orbit. This configuration could be launched by the Saturn V rocket that was then under development. The initial crew assignment of Frank Borman as commander, Michael Collins as command module pilot and William Anders as lunar module pilot for the third crewed Apollo flight was officially announced on November 20, 1967. N3. Collins was replaced by Jim Lovell in July 1968, after suffering a cervical disc herniation that required surgery to repair. This crew was unique among pre-space shuttle era missions in that the commander was not the most experienced member of the crew. Lovell had flown twice before, on Gemini 7 and Gemini 12. This would also be the first case of a commander of a previous mission flying as a non-commander. This was also the first mission to reunite crewmates from a previous mission. As of September 2022, all three Apollo 8 astronauts remain alive. The backup crew assignment of Neil Armstrong as commander, Lovell as CMP, 
and Buzz Aldrin as LMP for the third crewed Apollo flight was officially announced at the same time as the Prime crew. When Lovell was reassigned to the Prime crew, Aldrin was moved to CMP, and Fred Hayes was brought in as backup LMP. Armstrong would later command Apollo 11, with Aldrin as LMP and Collins as CMP. Hayes served on the backup crew of Apollo 11 as LMP and flew on Apollo 13 as LMP. During projects Mercury and Gemini, each mission had a prime and a backup crew. For Apollo, a third crew of astronauts was added, known as the support crew. The support crew maintained the flight plan, checklists, and mission ground rules, and ensured that the prime and backup crews were apprised of any changes. The support crew developed procedures in the simulators, especially those for emergency situations, so that the prime and backup crews could practice and master them in their simulator training. For Apollo 8, the support crew consisted of Ken Mattingly, Vance Brand, and Gerald Carr. The capsule communicator was an astronaut at the Mission Control Center in Houston, Texas, who was the only person who communicated directly with the flight crew. The mission control teams rotated in three shifts, each led by a flight director. The triangular shape of the insignia refers to the shape of the Apollo CM. It shows a red figure 8 looping around the Earth and Moon to reflect both the mission number and the circumlunar nature of the mission. The initial design of the insignia was developed by Jim Lovell, who reportedly sketched it while riding in the back seat of AT-38 flight from California to Houston shortly after learning of Apollo 8's re-designation as a lunar orbital mission. The crew wanted to name their spacecraft, but NASA did not allow it. The crew would have likely chosen Columbiad, the name of the giant cannon that launches a space vehicle in Jules Verne's 1865 novel From the Earth to the Moon. The Apollo 11 CM was named Columbia in part for that reason. On September 20, 1967, NASA adopted a seven-step plan for Apollo missions, with the final step being a moon landing. Apollo 4 and Apollo 6 were a, missions, tests of the Saturn V launch vehicle using an uncrewed Block I production model of the command and service module in Earth orbit. Apollo 5 was a B mission, a test of the LM in Earth orbit. Apollo 7, scheduled for October 1968, would be a C mission, a crewed Earth orbit flight of the CSM. Further missions depended on the readiness of the LM. It had been decided as early as May 1967 that there would be at least four additional missions. Apollo 8 was planned as the D mission, a test of the LM in a low Earth orbit in December 1968 by James McDivitt, David Scott, and Russell Schweikert, while Borman's crew would fly the E mission, a more rigorous LM test in an elliptical medium Earth orbit as Apollo 9, in early 1969. The F mission would test the CSM and LM in lunar orbit, and the G mission would be the finale, the moon landing. Production of the LM fell behind schedule, and when Apollo 8's LM-3 arrived at the Kennedy Space Center in June 1968, more than a hundred significant defects were discovered, leading Bob Gilruth, the director of the Manned Spacecraft Center, and others to conclude that there was no prospect of LM-3 being ready to fly in 1968. Following the original seven-step plan would have meant delaying the D and subsequent missions, and endangering the program's goal of a lunar landing before the end of 1969.